I did a video a few weeks back reassessing the list of scientists rejecting evolution, and in it I also mentioned this, this trend of denialism that started with um, Big Tobacco denying that cigarettes causing lung cancer and how those same people went on to found the George C. Marshall Institute, which currently denies global warming. Well, in the comment section of that video, I came across some comments by a person named Ephemerance, and they directed me to a video that demonstrated that solar um, activity actually is what caused the recent warming trend. Well, that video actually has a lot of misinformation in it, and I decided I'd take the opportunity to go ahead and refute it now. Humans are not the main source of carbon dioxide. Humans produce a um, small fraction in the single digits percentage-wise of the CO2 that is produced in the atmosphere. Volcanoes produce more CO2 each year than all the factories and cars and planes and other sources of man-made carbon dioxide put together. Oh, that's actually completely incorrect. The United States Geological Survey actually puts human activity contributing 126 times more CO2 into the atmosphere than volcanoes. Um, there are also several other studies linked right here which confirm that and give the same results. Furthermore, even if it was demonstrated that volcanoes produce so much more CO2 than human activity, it really would be irrelevant simply because a small change can produce drastic results. The current warming began long before people had cars or electric lights. In the past 150 years, the temperature has risen just over half a degree Celsius. But most of that rise occurred before 1940. Since that time, the temperature has fallen for four decades and risen for three. There is no evidence at all from Earth's long climate history that carbon dioxide has ever determined global temperatures. Wait, did he just say that there is no evidence linking CO2 and global temperature? I'm sorry, but we have ice core samples going back 400,000 years which easily demonstrate this relationship. Furthermore, it is, however, true that carbon dioxide content is not the only contributor to global temperature. I will give him that hands down, however, I don't really think anybody is arguing that. Going back to the graph, I'd also like to point out an interesting little phenomenon. Take a look at the top image, which is the graph, which is a screenshot from the video. Look at that supposed cooling trend. Now look at this graph from NASA, which is on the bottom. Does that cooling trend look anywhere near as pronounced in the NASA graph as it is in the movie graph? Just an observation. Uh, furthermore, it, it's interesting what they will use to, to classify a trend. They will look, take it that, that, that small little downturn where, where the global temperature really isn't rising that much and say, aha, global cooling, look at that trend, it's so strong. And yet they'll ignore the trend going up with a slope that's ten times greater, as seen with creationists, there's a giant asymmetry in burden of proof. In 1991, senior scientists at the Danish Meteorological Institute decided to compile a record of sunspots in the 20th century and compare it with the temperature record. What they found was an incredibly close correlation between what the sun was doing and changes in temperature on Earth. Solar activity, they found, rose sharply to 1940, fell back for four decades until the 1970s, and then rose again after that. Well, this is a genuine scientific claim that can be investigated. In fact, um, user GreenMan3610 has a number of videos debunking the claims of global warming denialists, and he is criminally undersubscribed. Um, I don't really care what your positions are, but you should at least take a look at his videos, because he's an expert at debunking these things. I'll let him go ahead and take it from here. The sun. It's the source of all heat, light, and life in the solar system. It seems an obvious question to ask. Does the sun have something to do with climate? The answer is, of course, yes. It's absolutely central. But a more useful question to ask might be, does the sun have anything to do with the unequivocal warming of the last 100 years? Here, scientists can give us some answers. Our technology is very sophisticated in this area and solar activity has been accurately measured using both ground and space-based systems for decades, and no change in solar output has been detected that could be responsible for the observed global warming, especially in the last 30 years. Moreover, when we look at the way the atmosphere is warming, there seems to be a pattern. If the sun were warming the atmosphere from space, 
we would expect to see a, a uniform warming pattern all the way down. But that's not what we see. In fact, what we observe is the troposphere, the lower part of the atmosphere that we live in, seems to be warming. But above that, the upper part of the atmosphere, the stratosphere, seems to show a cooling. This pattern is the thermodynamic fingerprint, the smoking gun, the DNA evidence of human-caused greenhouse warming. We've observed other patterns as well. For instance, the planet is warming at the same rate at night as during the day. And there's more warming in winter than in summer. And again, there's more warming at the poles than at the equator. All of these indicators run counter to what would be expected of a solar influence. But let's take a look at some of the empirical data that scientists have developed. In this case, published by the British Royal Society. Here it is, TSI, total solar irradiance, everything that comes out of the sun for the last three decades. Many of you know that the sun has 11 year cycles and here they are. Let's take a look at global temperatures during the same time period. In marked contrast to the sun's steady activity, we see a constant rise in temperature decade after decade. But there are some more exotic claims made by the hardcore denialists. Here's a clip from my favorite piece of climate denial pop culture, the great global warming swindle, which claims to be the ultimate debunking of all things related to climate change, but has been a goldmine for folks like me. This very cool graphic reports to be a reconstruction of global temperatures in turquoise versus solar activity in red. It's not solar activity like you and I think of, like sunshine. It's a measure of the frequency of sunspot cycles. And there's an arcane theory involving sunspots, cosmic rays, and atmospheric particles that is said to influence climate. The film was shown not long ago on Australian TV, and the producer was interviewed in relation to this graph. The journalist said how impressive the graph was, and certainly seemed to show a strong relationship between sunspots and global temperature. However, he wondered why the graph seemed to stop in 1975. The producer did not have a satisfactory answer, so our intrepid journalists went to the leading databases and filled in the remaining three decades. And when you do that, you'll see why they clipped the graph at that point. Because the supposed relationship completely breaks down for the last 30 years. It's called cherry picking taking the piece of data that supports your theory and leaving the rest out. And you find it in the climate denialist literature over and over and over again. In fact, the most recent study we have on the sun's relationship to climate comes from NASA and the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory. And the results are very clear. The sun, if anything, contributes a very slight overall cooling over the last 25 years and none of the natural processes can account for the overall warming trend in global surface temperatures. In future installments, we'll talk more about the sun, the other influences on Earth's climate, the way they work together, and the way man's influence has affected them in recent centuries. Keep coming back to the climate denial crock of the week for the very best explanation of what real science and real scientists have to say about the changing state of our planet. Keep sending in your comments, and thanks for listening. And again, that video is from GreenMan3610, who again, as I said, is criminally undersubscribed. I highly recommend you check out his other videos and subscribe to him if you like him. Well, that's it for this time, guys. Thank you very much for your interest. I appreciate it. And here it is, your moment of zen.